Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping a link in the comment section below, and we'll do it for you. You can check out our second YouTube channel where we post weekly vlogs, and um, you can hit the subscribe. It's called Funny and Jesse 2.0 and, and just enjoy the content that we're putting out. We've got a podcast called Diving In with Funny and Jesse and we have some amazing, amazing conversations which you guys don't want to miss. You can find us on iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, this channel or our second YouTube channel for the visual. And we've got a Patreon. You guys can feel free to become members and we'll appreciate. A big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting and everything else that you guys do. We are very, very grateful. I hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed. So today we're going to be reacting to the power of the word Bismillah. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. So as we know, every surah of the Quran begins with the Basmillah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and except for Surah Tawbah, the ninth chapter of the Quran. So it can't be underestimated the importance of the Basmillah. We know that the sunnah of our Prophet وسلم, before beginning anything is to say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Whether it's putting one's clothes on, whether it's eating food, drinking drink, etc. We begin with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, we mentioned that letters are important. And this is from the hadith. Alif is a letter. Lam is a letter. Mim is a letter. So the letters themselves contain, each letter contains not only hasanat, but light, illumination, and blessing. So a good point of departure, a starting point, is the ba of the basmala. That this ba, often, you know, there's a lot of discussion, the type of ba in grammar. So they say, some say ba tabarruk, some say ba al-musahaba. It's the ba of taking blessing. That when we say bismillah ar-Rahman rahim that we take the blessing of the name of Allah before we do anything. And then also ba al-musahaba, that the ba of accompaniment. Because when we begin something, bismillah ar-Rahman rahim it's as if the, the name of Allah accompanies the, the effort that we're doing. It's as if the name of Allah is our sahib, is our companion in the particular thing that we're doing. And so the accompaniment, the ba that, that is of accompaniment. And the reality is we are accompanying the name of Allah. But this is mentioned by the grammarians. So there is blessing, the ba of blessing, the, the ba of withness, we could say. Musahaba, the, okay, we're with the name of Allah before we begin something. Now, obviously, we want to be with the name of Allah when we, before we recite Quran, because we're entering into the arena of opening our hearts to His eternal speech, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the basmala, there's a couple things to reflect over in terms of the basmala. One, bismillah, that the ism is there. So, the ism, it's the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, we begin with asking for the blessings of and beginning with seeking withness, accompaniment of what? Of the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ismillah, the name of Allah. One of the things that's interesting in both Sunni tradition, the, the kalam of Ahlul Sunnah, the theology of the Sunnis, as well as the Sufi tradition, the tradition of the, of the qawm, the people of spirituality of this ummah, they both articulate that a principle that al-ism wal musamma wahidun, the name and the named are one. Meaning what? Highlighting the incredible power and import of what's called signification, dalala. So each of us has a name, but that name signifies our reality. Okay, so Muaz is a name, but it signifies in our room here, Muaz, brother Muaz. It signifies him. It's not just a name. Like they mentioned in the, in the a fiqh implication of this, if someone if someone's married to a woman named Zainab and they say Zainab is divorced, then they can't go to the qadi and say, "Well, I just said the name is divorced, Zainab." You know, no, the qadi would say, "No, you 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 divorced your wife. It counts because why? Because the name Zainab signifies the person you're married to, and that signification is very profound. It's serious. It's real. It's not you know names are real. Names are important. This is what. Allah Ta'ala taught Sayyidina Adam al Islam, Alama Adam al Asma Kullaha. Allah Ta'ala taught our Master, Master Adam al Islam all of the names because each signifies a reality and that signification is very real and it's powerful. In fact, all of the Quran is, signifies Allah's reality 
It signifies Allah's attribute of speech. And, and that's why it's eternal, because Allah's attributes are eternal. So this is very serious. So al-ism wal-musamma wahidun, that, that the name and the named are, are one. We know that technically there's a difference. Obviously a name is different than, than the named. But because of this signification, they're considered one. And based on this, we can understand, for example, Allah Ta'ala says, Sabbi hisma rabbik al Glorify the name of your Lord Most High. Now obviously when we say Subhanallah, we're not intending only the name of Allah, as precious and majestic as it is, but we're, we're intending Allah Himself, His being. Glory be to Allah Himself. So we, we glorify His name, but we intend His being, His reality, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The name and the named are one, and so we glorify Allah Himself. Okay, so put it back in the Basmala, that Bismillah, we begin with seeking the witness of the name of Allah, but by the implication of this principle, we begin seeking the witness of Allah Himself. Because the ism and the musamma go together. So when we say Bismillah, we're not only seeking the blessing and the witness, the accompaniment of the name Allah, but the one that that name signifies, Allah Himself, Allah's very being. And Allah, Allah has witness. This is something Allah articulates in the Qur'an. Allah mentions this in the Qur'an, that وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ And He, capital H, is with you wheresoever you may be. This is the ma'iyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ Verily, Allah is with the people of patience. It's mentioned many times in the Qur'an, the ma'iyah, the witness of Allah. So we are seeking that witness, Bismillah. Not simply the name, but Allah Himself. Now, another thing about the Basmalah is that the entire world in reality is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Meaning there's also that the, that the Ba of Basmallah indicates the, the basis of the existence of contingent reality. That the entire universe only exists Bismillah. Only because of Allah. Only through Allah's creative act. If there were no Bismillah, if there were no basis of being created by Allah, then nothing would exist. So it's also an ontological statement. It's a statement of indicating the basis of why things exist. Why is there, this is the perennial question in philosophy, why is there something other than nothing, right, in the world? The answer, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Because of, through the, with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, i.e. Allah creates it. So the ba, from this perspective, is indicating the utter dependence, ontological dependence of anything besides Allah on Allah. For Allah Himself subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Al-Alam, all of this cosmos, everything that exists, including myself and yourself, only exists, Bismillah, by, through, with the creative fiat, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah's action of causing it to exist. It's not just something we recite to seek Allah's presence, but it's also making a statement of reality that anything that exists is through the, the, the name of Allah, i.e. because of Allah's creative act. Now, that's, so that's reality too. And from this perspective, all of creation is an abd. It is dependent on God. In that sense, it's a servant of God. So there's two usages of the term abd in Arabic. One, that which is ontologically dependent, that which cannot exist on its own, which is everything. Everything besides Allah is an abd of Allah from that vantage point because of dependence. But then the other meaning of abd is those that embrace that dependence by directing themselves to Allah, by worshiping and serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's two levels of servanthood, dependence, which all of creation shares, and being selected for devotion, which only the people of Allah share. So from that perspective now, why then did Allah ta'ala put ism there? Because what we're saying, and this is the tafsir of of, of Many of our scholars, Alama Maidani, for example, in his commentary of the Tahawiyah talks about this, that everything exists only be, only by, through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only with Allah's action of creating it. So then one could ask, why not, why did Allah ta'ala not say billah when he revealed this verse? If it's based on this principle of dependence to be created, ontological dependence. The grammarians answer that had Allah ta'ala said billah, the Arabs would have thought it's an oath. Had Allah Ta'ala said Billah, Billah, Ba is also used for an oath. Like Wallahi, Billahi. I swear by God. 
And so to differentiate, the, to, to exclude this meaning of swearing, of an oath, Allah Ta'ala put ism, bismillah, so that the Arabs wouldn't get confused. That's, the, one, that's a grammatical answer. But a theological or metaphysical answer, this is also expressed by Alama Maidani, who died 1297 or so, so almost 14, late 13th century scholar of Hanafi fiqh and theology, that he says that the ism is there because... The world exists only through Allah, only because Allah creates it. But in its very existence, it manifests the names and attributes of Allah. And so between the world, the ba, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ism. That when Allah, as he creates with this ba through, and then the world exists, the ism, the asma, and the sifat are revealed. And so it, this order is, is teaching us metaphysics. And so when we see the world, you see someone, a creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, heading towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Changing the way they are and making repentance and heading towards Allah. So from a vantage point of creation, you see a creature choosing the path to guidance. But from the vantage point of Allah's reality, we see the manifestation of his name, At-Tawwab. The, the one who relents to his servants and accepts their, their tawbah. Al-Hadi, the one that guides. Al-Ghafoor, the one that forgives. There's a vantage point of just seeing which name is being manifested. You see someone doing well. You see, this is the implication of the name al rafiq the one who raises. You see someone falling down in life. This is the implication of the name al khafid the one that lowers. You see someone turning away from Allah and rejecting Allah. This is the manifestation of his name Shadid al Aqab, the one that's fierce in punishment, Al Mudil, the one that misguides. All of the uh, specifics of creation are ultimately from the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the ism there apprises us of that reality. But then you complete the Basmallah, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. Why? Because of all the names and attributes, the ones that are most salient in this life and the next are Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. And He chose this, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is important in our theology. Allah Ta'ala was not forced to be merciful. He chose. Kataba ala nafsihir rahma. Allah has prescribed upon himself mercy. And so then now the difference between ar rahman ar rahim. And again, in relation to the existence of the world, that the implication of ar rahman, according to many of our, many, many mufassirin, that this is reflected in the mercy of the existence of things in this world, just to be created. And so it's shared by all of creation. The good of creation, the bad of creation, the sweet of creation, the bitter of creation, the, the holy of creation, the, the demonic of creation. They all partake of the mercy of being created. By whom? By Allah who shows himself to be our Rahman, our very existence. And all of the blessings of sustenance in this world, which again are not prejudice. The good get it, the bad get it. And sometimes the good don't get it. And sometimes the bad get it more. And so all of the provision and the provender and the rizq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also emanating from the implication of this name Ar-Rahman. Right? Ibn Atala says he blessed you firstly by giving you existence and then subsequently by continuously maintaining you in existence. This is from his name, Ar-Rahman, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar-Rahim, the mercy that is implied by the name Ar-Rahim is specifically for the believers. When is that manifested? In the hereafter. And so the manifestations of the mercy of Ar-Rahim are eternal, without end, because paradise is everlasting. So this is some of what is mentioned of these two names. But a practical lesson that we can get out of this principle that the Basmala indicates to us our ontological dependence on Allah is to embrace our dependence on Allah. That, Ya ayyuhan nas, antumul fuqara ilallah. O humanity, you are in dire need of Allah. Wallahu hu al ghani ul hamid. And Allah alone, the huwa there, wallahu hu al ghani. The huwa indicates that it's hasr, lil hasr. No one else shares this. The mirul fasl. So, no one else is al ghani. The only one that's completely independent without need is Allah alone. Wallahu hu al ghani ul hamid. Like we all have needs. And look at that second name, Al-Hamid. And this is related to the fact that he is Al-Ghani, that Allah Ta'ala is without any need. So all praise goes to him.
very interesting video and I guess everything was simple to understand at the end of the day oh by the way before I even say anything why why does chapter 19 of the Quran chapter 9 not 19 chapter 9 of the Quran not have the bismillah at the beginning of the chapter and then now get into what I wanted to say I wanted to say um at the end of the day whether it's um through prayer or you're reading something or you're doing something or you're just thankful for something you have to acknowledge that those are god's blessings those are god's blessings whether we want to, we're praying for something we're praying that god may bless us and when we sit down and say god guide me we're acknowledging that god power to check to take to, to send things around for us in this world and i guess that was mentioned in this blessings and is it witness was mentioned in this video that i watched let me know what you guys actually think about this what do you have to say do you have a different opinion from the guy that was reciting this i mean talking or or do you agree like i did let us know in the comment section below and we'll appreciate make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video